there's a little bit of winter sunshine today and it's a reminder that spring is just around the corner which means that birds are going to start migrating to and from the UK. In this video I'm going to tell you about the distances travelled by 10 different birds that visit the UK. I'm going to start with one of our most well-known and recognisable migrating birds, if not from their appearance, definitely from their call. Cuckoos only spend a short amount of their time here, arriving from April to early May and then departing again around June. During this time, they leave their eggs in the nest of other birds and let them rear their chicks on their behalf. Cuckoos migrate at 3 to 5 kilometers above the Earth's surface and most of the birds that breed in the UK spend their winters around the Congo Basin. They take different routes to get there, avoiding the Sahara Desert and can travel between 4,000 and 4,700 miles each way. One bird which definitely doesn't have to worry about deserts on its migration is the Hooper Swan. These are winter visitors and arrive in the UK, usually starting in Scotland from October before gradually moving down the country. Hooper swans breed in Iceland, a mere 850 miles away, and those that are successful at rearing chicks will often travel as a family group. They depart the UK to head northwards once more around March. Just over a month later, from late April to May, Arctic terns arrive on our shores. Compared to all of the other birds that feature in this video, these have the widest distribution when it comes to birds that have been ringed in the UK and then recorded in other countries. They have turned up in North America, South Africa, Australia and lots of places in between. But that's not all. Some UK breeding birds travel as far as the Antarctic, more than 10,000 miles away. They breed in coastal areas here in the UK and depart to their wintering grounds in September or October. You might be surprised to see the next bird in this video because they can be found in large numbers throughout the year. But during the winter, the UK breeding population of blackbirds is significantly bolstered by winter migrants from Scandinavia and Northern Europe. These birds travel around 850 miles from their breeding grounds and arrive from September and depart in March or April. I would love to tell you what portion of wintering blackbirds are migrants, but from my research for this video, I'm not convinced that anyone knows the actual answer to that question, as they blend in so well with our resident population. One bird which doesn't blend in and announces its presence by filling the sky with screams as it chases its airborne prey is the swift. Famous for spending almost its entire life on the wing, including sleeping and drinking, swifts arrive here from April to early May. They will nest as quickly as possible and after rearing just one clutch of chicks, they'll be on their way again. Most swifts leave the UK in late July or August and travel south for the winter. They often stop in Spain, Portugal, Morocco and Western Africa as they make their way to the east coast of Africa. In total, they travel around 6,800 miles each way. That's quite impressive compared to this next bird, the red wing. Around 700,000 visit each winter, with those that come to the UK nesting in Iceland, 850 miles away, Scandinavia, 700 miles away, and also in the Faroe Islands, which are only 450 miles from this country. They mainly migrate at night and stay from September until March or April. And just as the Red Wing are leaving, a famous summer migrant begins to arrive. Swallows come to the UK to breed and rear between one and three clutches of chicks whilst they are here. Most of them 
migrate away from the UK in September or October, when their prey, which is flying insects, almost runs out. These birds will head south, sometimes travelling as far as South Africa, around 6,000 miles away. However, in recent years, a very small number of them have been staying in the UK all year long. There's another bird whose migration is a bit flexible, and that is the puffin. Unlike the other birds in this video, puffins don't have a land-based migration destination and instead head out to sea for the winter. The direction that they go can vary and it seems that young birds pick which way they're going to head in their first winter. This isn't random though, as once a bird has decided where it's going to go, it will return there year after year. Some UK puffins head out into the North Sea, some to the North Atlantic, and quite a few of them spend their winters off the Faroe Islands, around 400 miles north of Scotland. They are out to sea from August and return to land to breed around April. Puffins are quite small, but not as small as the next migrant bird. Brambling are about the size of house sparrows, but they are still capable of migrating a fair distance. They mostly breed in Scandinavia and in Western Russia, travelling a minimum of 730 miles to get to the UK. Interestingly, bramblings seem to sometimes change their wintering grounds between years, as birds that have been ringed in the UK have then been recorded in other European countries in following winters, including France, Belgium and as far away as Italy. A lot of the birds that have featured in this video stop in the UK for most of the summer or most of the winter but the next species mainly passes through the country on its way south. The bar-tailed gobwits that are found in the UK breed in Scandinavia and Siberia, travelling more than 700 miles before reaching our shores. Hundreds of thousands of them pass through each September and October, with only a small number remaining here for the winter. The rest of them continue travelling south and go as far as Western Africa. Although that might not be too impressive compared to the other species in this video, one bar-tailed gobwit holds the world record for the longest uninterrupted flight. It took 11 days to travel 8,435 miles from Alaska to Tasmania, without stopping for food or rest. Some things in nature remain a mystery, and one of those is what causes and what determines where birds are going to go when they migrate. Let me know if you have any theories in the comments down below. And that's all, but before you fly away, why not check out this video here for more UK wildlife. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.